Here are my 10 favorite songs. Here we go. I have my post-it notes. Number one, Wishing Well Hotel. There are many reasons why I love this song, but the main one I think is the marriage of the acoustic with the synthesizers. And it has this old meets kind of new vibe to it. And I think it's a very unique sounding song. And I'm proud of that. And uh, this was co-written and produced by Ethan Menser, who obviously had the vision of shaping this into the sound. Number nine, Blurred. I like Blurred for the same reasons that I like Wishing Well Hotel, except the acoustic guitar in Blurred never really made it front and center. I worked with Sean O'Brien on this track, and when he got done doing like the synthesizer treatments, it was so great sounding that we just decided to kind of roll without that acoustic guitar. It's in there a little bit, but not too much. Eight, dance to it. I mean, it's just infectious. I don't know what else I can say about dance to it. And there's a robot. Seven, Prism Sky. I believe this is the first track I recorded at Peak Recording with James Meter. It has a great band. Jess Martins, Garrett Tillman, and James on guitars. Um, I just kind of had the song with the basic guitar riff, um, and James did some beautiful work on the production, but also on his, his guitar playing really made this song the song. Six, Border to the Badlands. This was kind of a sleeper hit for me. I wasn't expecting the chorus to be as strong as it is, but every time I listen to that chorus, I'm like, yes, nailed it. And I play the guitar solo, which I don't really get to play the guitar a lot, which is good because I'm not a great guitar player, <laughs> but I played a great solo. Five, Blue Eyed Boy. The story of me turning 21 one summer living in Newport, Rhode Island. Really fun song, it's 95% all acoustic. I think there's like hand claps and bongos and the percussion, and it's got some cool chord changes. And I have giant eyeballs in the video. Four, what I'm supposed to do. This is like an epic track that I did not expect to be an epic track, and so that's why I like it so much. But I love the kind of shotgun lyrics of this song, and I love what Ethan did with the production. I remember coming out of Blade Runner, the new Blade Runner film, and in that soundtrack, there's this kind of grinding, like, thing, and I was like, we gotta open the song with something like this, and I think that sound just kind of sets up the mood for this really, really punchy kind of outlier artistically for me. Three, science. Really upbeat, chill at the same time. I think it's the best chorus I've ever written. This is number one for a lot of people. Two, take the picture. I just love the song because it opens with that guitar riff and it never slows down. It has a cool section that ramps up to the chorus that I really like. And it has my, my one of my favorite elements is the Bruce Dickinson-esque fist clench. I take the picture! That's the guy from Iron Maiden. He does this a lot live. In number one, Drum roll, please. Oh, no drum roll? Okay. Talk of the Town. For me, Talk of the Town, and this is another Ethan Menser co-write, and Ethan Menser production, and Ethan Menser mix. I had this like Americana mode that I was in for a while, and this kind of represents the transition from that into more of the synth rock kind of stuff I've been doing. And the way the band played it, I thought was phenomenal. It's just got a really good bounce. It's got a really good pop. It's, and I really like the message because on the face of it, you're kind of rooting for this person. Like, oh yeah, you want 
for the narrator to be the talk of the town. Like, go, yes, go be the talk of the town. But when you actually dig into the lyrics, it's a farce. And this person is actually a total you know, narcissistic egomaniac who thinks that they are better than everyone. <laughs> so it's kind of my way of, you know, saying, just kidding. But derive whatever meaning you want from Talk of the Town, but that's actually my interpretation of those lyrics. Okay, and here are my do-overs. Here are the ones that I love, but I like missed a little bit on the execution. First, there's three. First is The Shadow, formerly titled Give to the Shadow. Just sometimes everything on a track clicks, but the, the energy just isn't quite what it should be, and I feel like that is the case in this track. I don't know exactly where that energy went. Uh, maybe it's the arrangement, I don't know, but like I just, it doesn't click the way I want it to click, and it's sometimes that's just mysterious. I feel the same way about Take the Picture, even though it's my second favorite song, there are things in my vocal performance um, this is one of those deadline things, like it's, it's really high for me to sing and I was like my jaw was sore and my voice was tired and I kind of did like a lot of belting and when I listen back to the lyric on it, I feel like I'm kind of forcing the verses out. It's like more of a choppy vocal performance than I like and I think that does not serve the song as well. Last one, Perfect Regret. This is a classic mistake. I had a demo of this that I loved with an electronic drum loop and I think I should have just left it because the way we play this as a band, it's killer, but like it's not what I envisioned because I was kind of married to this old thing, but there was just some magic in that original bit that I wish I could bring into this new version, but it's a new song, and that's that's on me to like, let that be. So anyway, I hope that was fun, and um, yeah, we're halfway through. We're halfway through Song Lab. This is cool. I'm having a great time. So if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, please do that. And week 27, next week, it's called Changing States. I will see you then.